In this video you will learn most popular React errors and how you can fix them. And the first error that you for sure saw is this one, missing key prop for element in iterator. So basically when we are mapping through some data to render them inside the component, we must provide inside an attribute key, it is mandatory. And this key must be something unique for every single item. This is why typically we will write here item.id, because if we are talking about array of some items from API, they are always unique, like for example IDs here, and then as you can see this error is gone. The next error you won't get by default, but it can be configured through ESLint. As you can see here, I am hovering on exactly the same code, but we are getting an error do not use array indexes in keys. And as you can see here, we are mapping through our data and we are not using item ID, but we are getting an index as a second argument and we are using it as a key. This is essentially totally fine for some cases, but it might break in other cases. This is why it makes a lot of sense to force such rule. So inside your ESLint, you can add React no array index key 1 and it will enable this rule. So why index is bad? Because it might change when you are changing an array. So you remove the item from the array, your index changes and it is not staying the same. This is why it is much better to always use something unique like the ID of the item and not index. In this case you will be safe in all possible cases. Another error that some beginners might do is looking like this. React hook use callback is called conditionally. React hooks must be called in the exactly same order in every component render. Typically people know that they must write all hooks at the beginning of their component, like for example this you state in the toggle. But sometimes if you are returning your markup right after, then it happens before your use callback hook was registered, which essentially leads to the error because there is a condition logic before. I'm sorry for interruption, but I just want to let you know that I have lots of advanced courses on different web technologies where we create real applications and prepare for the interviews. You can find the link in the description box below. Now let's jump back into the video. Obviously you will get exactly the same problem if you would wrap your use callback with if condition, but typically people are not doing that, but this might be a problem if you just put an if condition before. And the solution here is simply to move your use callback on the top, then this error is not there and your code is completely valid. Another popular error that you will for sure get if you are using use effect is this. React hook use effect has missing dependencies on change and value. You must either include them or remove the dependency array. Just to remind you, if we are removing the dependency array, then this use effect will trigger after every single render. When we put here an empty array, it will trigger only once after the first render. We typically want to do that if we need to fetch some data on initialized. But this is not enough because we must provide all dependencies that we are using inside. In our case here we are using a value, which is our prop, and on change function, which is also our prop. So in order to fix this error, we must add all our dependencies, so properties and functions that we used inside in the dependency. And it is important to remember that our function, like on change, is actually also a prop, so it must be added to the dependency. The next error that you can get is cannot perform a React state update on the unmounted component. What does it mean? Just imagine that here we have a component with just some data. And this component fetches some data from the API with this fetch async data function inside our use effect. And what this call does, on success it sets data to our state. This is how we are typically writing such code. Now we have data, we can render it, but as you can see this API call takes 2 seconds. And this code will work just fine until the moment when this component was destroyed before we fetched data. And typically you are not destroying your components by hands, you are getting this behavior when you are jumping between different routes. So with every single jump to another route, your previous component is destroyed. 
If this is one of such components and there is still an ongoing API call, this is nothing bad. But when your component will be destroyed, it can't really do this set data because it is already destroyed. And you will get this error. Which essentially means that we must always be sure that our component won't throw some error if it is destroyed, but the ongoing operation, like for example an API call, is still there. And in order to do that, I want to create a property is mounted. And here I'm using use reference, and by default I'm setting here true. Now inside our use effect, we can return a function and set here is mounted current to false because this is our reference. And if you don't know, this function is a callback which will be called after our component is destroyed, which essentially means we're destroying our component, we're setting this reference to false. It doesn't really do anything, but now we have a variable which shows us if our component is destroyed or not. And essentially this code with API call does not fail. What fails is setting of this data. This is why here we can say if our component is still mounted, then we want to set data. If it is not mounted, we won't call this line and this error will never happen. Another error that you might get is too many renders. As you can see in browser, we are getting an error, too many re-renders. React limits the number of renders to prevent an infinite loop. And the most common use case how people are doing that, they are doing state update directly in the render, which essentially means here we have our use state with set count. And as you can see, we directly assigned set count as a function inside on click. This is wrong and this leads to infinite renders. The correct way to do that is to provide inside an anonymous function like this, where you are calling set count. As you can see, I'm reloading the page now and our page is working. But exactly the same will happen if we simply call this set count directly in the render. So all code that you're writing here is a part of the rendering. It will trigger a render again and again because every single render makes this set count. I'm reloading the page, this error is again there. When we comment out this code, this error is not there and our component works, which essentially means you should never update your state in the rendering process. This is wrong. Another error that you might get is that something is not valid as a React child. Let's have a look on the code. As you can see inside my app, I am rendering not valid child and as a prop I am providing a function. Now let's look on our not valid child. We simply get here a prop body and we are rendering it in our markup. The main problem is that function is not a valid property to render in the markup. This is why we are getting this error. If I'm providing here some normal G6 markup, for example with text foo, we won't get an error. Which essentially means if you are getting this error, you are providing to your markup something wrong. One more error, which is extremely popular, is looking like this. G6 expressions must have one parent element, which essentially means our component must have just a single root element. So you can write here a div and just put this code inside. This is totally valid. Now here we can export with the default our component and we are not getting an error. But let's say you don't want an additional div container, then you need to use React fragment. You can write here fragment. As you can see, it is imported from React. And now here we're closing our fragment. Most importantly, this fragment won't be rendered in our markup. So inside our component, we will simply see just two divs. But still, it is a valid code for React because we have just a single root node. And additionally to that, if you don't like to write the whole fragment word, you can simply remove it and write your code like this. This is exactly the shorthand of writing React Fragment. So these were most popular React errors. But if you're interested how you can render 100,000 lines of different data inside React with high performance, make sure to check this video also.